HP LaserJet Managed MFP E826 Plus 6GW47A 2X520 DPT DCF Unboxing and Setup. This video will show how to unbox and set up the HP LaserJet Managed Flow MFP E826Z printer and the 2X520 DPT dual cassette feeder paper tray. Note, the printer in this video might look different than the printer being installed. However, the steps in this video are correct for this printer. Refer to the instructions in your install guide before proceeding. Before the printer is powered on, make sure that the room and equipment are at least 15 degrees Celsius, 59 degrees Fahrenheit. Leave the printer on the shipping pallet until it is ready to install on a DCF, HCI, or stand. Make sure the work area is free of debris and the floor is not slippery or wet. Unboxing the 2X520 DPT Dual Cassette Feeder Paper Tray Begin by cutting the tape and opening the box. Remove the smaller box containing the setup guide and accessories. Carefully rotate the box and position it flat on the ground. Slide the paper tray out of the box. Remove the protective styrofoam. Lift off the plastic bag. Remove the blue tape securing the protective sheet and then remove the sheet. Remove the plastic bag containing the two thumb screws. These will be used to secure the paper tray to the printer. Remove the remaining visible pieces of blue tape. Lift the latch and open the side door. Remove the blue tape. Close the side door. Open the input tray 4. Remove the blue tape and foam from inside the paper tray. Close the input tray 4. Open the input tray 5. Remove the blue tape and foam from inside the paper tray. Close the input tray 5. Now set the paper tray and accessories aside while you prepare the printer. Unboxing the HP LaserJet Managed Flow MFP E826Z printer. Note, after unpacking the printer and supplies, allow them to acclimate for 4 hours. If the printer and hardware were stored below 0 degrees Celsius, 32 degrees Fahrenheit, it may take them longer to acclimate. Do not remove the shipping tape or protective packing materials until after the printer is installed on a DCF, HCI, or stand. First, cut and remove the plastic wrap. Remove the protective foam from the corners. Lift off the plastic and then lift off the wooden top pallet. Cut and remove the shipping bands that secure the printer to the bottom pallet. Remove the four cardboard sheets from the sides and then lift off the remaining wood from the top. Cut and remove the additional shipping bands and then carefully lift the cardboard box off the printer. Locate the duplex turnaround guide, box, and the power cord and set them aside. Pull the protective clear plastic down to the base of the printer to allow access to lifting points. Remove the blue tape and foam sheet from the top of the printer. Imaging drums are stored in the output bin area below the automatic document feeder. Remove the imaging drums and set them aside. Locate and remove the keyboard from the side of the printer. Using the handholds on the side of the printer, Carefully lift the printer assembly and align the printer to the alignment pins and connector on the accessory. Carefully lower the printer onto the accessory. Caution: The printer assembly is heavy. Four people must lift and install it on the DCF, HCI, or the stand. Remove the blue tape from the sides of the printer.
remove the blue tape and protective sheet from the output tray. Then, remove the blue tape from the top of the printer. Remove the clear tape and open the ADF cover. Remove the tape and foam, then close the ADF cover. Be sure to remove the small foam piece from the ADF output tray. Open the scanner lid. Remove the protective sheet, then close the scanner lid. Peel off the clear film from the control panel screen and logo. Open input tray 2. Remove the foam and sticker labels. Then remove the blue tape. Close input tray 2. Open input tray 3. Remove the foam and the blue tape. Close input tray 3. Open input tray 2. Holding the tray by its sides, pull out and remove the tray from the printer. Then remove input tray 3 from the printer. Locate the two thumb screws that were removed from the DCF paper tray. Insert the thumb screws into the holes and tighten to secure the DCF, HCI, or stand to the printer. Insert paper tray 3 back into the printer. Then insert paper tray 2 into the printer. Now we will prepare the toner cartridges, drums, and accessories for installation. Open the toner box and slide out the toner cartridge. Shake the cartridge vigorously five times side to side to distribute the toner throughout the cartridge. It is recommended to keep the cartridge in the bag while shaking to prevent toner dusting. Remove the cartridge from the plastic bag. Remove two seals from the toner cartridge. Pull the red tabs straight out and away from the toner cartridge to remove the seals. Open the toner access door and then the right door. Remove the seal from the toner cartridge opening. Align the guide rail on the cartridge with the slot in the printer. Push in to fully seat the cartridge. After the toner cartridge has been installed, prepare the printer to install the imaging drum. Caution: Do not open the imaging drum package until it is ready to install. Prolonged exposure to bright light can damage the imaging drum and cause image quality problems. Remove the imaging drum shipping support. Then, remove the imaging unit shipping seal. Remove the imaging drum from the packaging. On the imaging drum protective orange cover, Locate the numbered arrows. Gently pull up at each numbered location to remove the cover. Caution: Do not touch the shiny surface of the imaging drum. Touching the drum surface can damage the drum and cause image quality problems. Hold the imaging drum by the gray handle on top and locate the front handle. Caution: Do not use the spring area to grasp the imaging drum. Caution. Make sure that the right door is open before installing the imaging drum. Align the imaging drum with the top rail on the printer and then slowly insert the imaging drum into the printer until it is fully seated. Tighten the thumb screw to secure the drum. Close the right door to engage the drum lock. Lower the toner collection unit into place and push in until both sides are fully seated. Close the toner access door. Locate the duplex turnaround guide you removed earlier. Install the duplex turnaround guide face up. Flex the guide. Install the front and rear pins on the second exit and then slide the middle pin up to snap it into position. Locate the keyboard, outer cover, and screws you removed earlier. Remove the keyboard mounting and connector cover. Extend the keyboard bracket and locate the mounting tabs. Install the tabs on the top of the bracket into the slots on the printer 
and then rotate the bracket down until the bottom snaps into place. Install the four mounting screws. Then connect the keyboard connector and push the cable in to secure it. Install the outer cover. Install the screw and screw cap to secure the cover. Open input tray 2. Push down on the blue tab in the back of the tray. At the same time, pinch or squeeze the blue tab in the front of the tray and slide to adjust to the proper paper length. Both tabs are spring-loaded and will lock once released. Squeeze the sides of the tab and then slide to adjust the paper width. Load the paper into the tray. Note, A4 or letter paper should be loaded with the long edge of the paper on the right side of the tray. Close input tray 2. Then open input tray 3. Push down on the blue tab in the back of the tray. At the same time, pinch or squeeze the blue tab in the front of the tray and slide to adjust to the proper paper length. Squeeze the sides of the tab and then slide to adjust the paper width. Load the paper into the tray. Note, A4 or letter paper should be loaded with the long edge of the paper on the right side of the tray. Close input tray 3. Connect the power cord to the printer and the wall outlet. Do not use an extension cord. Caution, each printer must be connected to a single dedicated circuit breaker, 15A or 20A. Press the power button to turn the printer on. Wait for the printer to automatically complete the initialization processes. Select your preferred language and then touch Next. Scroll down and select your location and then touch Next. Select the date and time format and then touch Next. Set the time by selecting the hour or minute and then touch OK. Adjust PM to AM by touching it. Touch Next. Select Yes to enable Auto Send and then touch Next. Select Yes to enable Print from USB Drive and then touch Next. Select Yes to enable Consumables Access Control and then touch Next. Finally, review your selections and then touch Finish. Print a configuration page to make sure that the printer is working properly. To do this, swipe over from the home screen and select Reports. Select Configuration Status Pages. Select Configuration Page, then touch the print icon. The configuration page prints. Now, lower the stabilizers to prevent the printer and accessory from moving. Rotate each caster towards the inside of the printer and slide in the stabilization blocks. Your printer is now ready for use.